All right, so my name is Jerome, I'm 27 years old. Basically, got into trading about 18 months ago, um, found a reliable educator at the beginning. So luckily for me, I wasn't, I didn't caught up, get caught up in the get rich quick and I was able to develop realistic goals and set realistic expectations from the very start of my journey. Um, so I gave myself about three years to become consistently profitable. Um, in that time of learning how to trade, learning market structure, um, I got to a point where I was really torn between what type of system and how, how I wanted to trade. I knew I wanted something to be more of a day trader from the very start. Um, but from previous educators telling me to kind of start on a more swing trading type of bias and kind of develop my my trading system on higher time frames um because of the less noise and everything i started doing that and i just never felt comfortable trading a system like that um, it just didn't fit my personality so going forward testing developing and testing and developing this cycle for probably about 14 15 months um since the start of my journey and between learning to trade, it got to a point where there's a lot of, it just, it got harder than it was meant to be. And it just kind of, it didn't steer me away from trading. It just, I felt like I was just on a hamster wheel spinning and getting nowhere. And I got to a point where I started a lot of people like shining object syndrome, but hmm. I, not in a way sense of like, I knew what I was doing, not like jumping around, like, Oh my God, this system is like awesome. And then looking at someone else's system, I was strategically looking for other trading educators and mentors and how they trade. And if that would suit me and then I would play mm -hmm. around with the ideas and everything. And then I came across Austin mm -hmm. and I watched his YouTube videos, his Instagram content for about two or three months before I even like reached out to him and just using with my old educator, we will, won't turn away from indicators, but we were told to use more or less strict price action. And the way they taught how to use, utilize price action and how to basically read market structure, it was very subject, like it was a lot of subjectivity involved. Yeah. So it was, it got to a point where I do my back testing, like that was great, but in a real life environment, you question yourself and you doubt yourself. Yeah. because of the subjectivity like it, it, as much as it was rules based my system it just in the back of my head like i didn't know what qualified as a a trend just using price action and it was a little bit too too much for me so seeing austin use the emas and the tdi to kind of gather that directional bias was just like something that i needed and that's what kind wow. of just sold me yeah. That is so that is so similar to my journey. I was gonna say I that. I know how, it's almost identical, how, right? That is identical to how I came to ASFX was pretty similar to you. I can't believe that. Yeah. Just through the and being a naked trader of price action and structure yeah. that I could never grasp. And then all it takes is a few indicators and you have found your edge and you're grasping it and you're running. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's like I, I've had since like starting like I think I'm almost 19 months now and like the last two months since being with ASFX is just like I've had the most development and being yeah. more of an active day trader like you get more in tune with the market and you understand each currency pair and how it moves and it, like it's just it's it's just like a whole new kind of feeling and it just it excites me more trying to like mm -hmm. having a system like this as well because it's just it's so in tune with my personality and everything so can you so yeah Jerome, define system for people that never there's probably people listening that haven't um watched a lot of our other videos and they don't really grasp yeah. what a system is can you clear that up so a system is 110 percent rules based syntax if then if then if then so mm -hmm. having a system you it's basically rules to follow and it it kind of it's like a what's an easy way to explain it it's just it really kind of just directs you from your your trading and it tells you when to enter when to exit um you know how much risk you're putting on each trade it just it really is like kind Keeping of it simple. <laughs> 
yeah, exactly. way that I describe it is binary decision making. It makes yeah. all like you said, if then it makes the decisions, yeah. if then like it builds you to the if then statement, but it gets you there by asking you yes or no questions. It's, it's yeah, always exactly. yes or no. So if you can boil it down to, is this in the right position or is it not? Then you're yeah. making it simple, like Lindsay said. So my other thought, yeah. as you were explaining kind of your backstory, the shiny object syndrome, what, what like was the first thing that you saw? Like, was it like an Instagram post? What, like what, what made you realize then that you had shiny object syndrome? To be honest, I think it was, I think it was just indicators. I think anything that had an indicator kind of drew, drew me to it because I felt like I needed a bit more market confirmation and something to kind of guide me in the oh, markets, especially when I tried to do day, day trading on the lower timeframes compared to how I was used to it on higher timeframes, there was a lot of noise and navigating through that noise without indicators was kind of like, yeah, that was stressful. It's tough. Very like, tough. Yeah, yeah. Like double, double tops and double bottoms on like a five and five minute, 15 minute chart. Is why just do you think not what people do that? Why do you think do, they I know. talk? Why do you think people don't like indicators without even being, is it just naturally closed mindedness? Like everybody's closed minded and they're, they heard somebody say that once and then they're like, Oh, that's what it is. I, I actually think it would. Yeah. Like I think it's just kind of industry standard. Every Instagram post I see now is like just raw naked My, price action. Yeah. Like no of one's course. and everyone's saying price action is King, which to a sense it is, but sure having indicators to kind of keep you on the right side of the market and kind of navigate your way through all that noise. I just, yeah. Like I just, I felt like I needed that. Sure. So, mm-hmm. Well, let me give coming you, into, co- like, sorry, I'm going to cut you off, but let me give you context to that too. I was talking to somebody yesterday in one of my one-on-ones about this, and this is something you can use when you explain it to people, Lindsay, going forward too. The reason that our indicators, I think, the combination of indicators that we use work so well is because you're pulling data from two different sources. So the EMAs yeah. are gathering data yeah. from price action and we know price action is king, right? Yes. So the EMAs are going to give us an overall idea of what price is telling us. And I think that's yeah. why like yesterday I was watching GBP JPY and it pulled right back to the 50 and the 200 EMA. They were very close together. And I was like, it's interesting to see the EMAs are really an, a good reflection of the price action zones. So you, no, those EMAs yeah. are attached there. So that's great. But the reason then that adding the TDI makes it so valuable, I think, in my opinion, is because the RSI, which is the main piece of the TDI, is actually gathering more information from volume than it is from yeah. strictly price. Yeah. So now you're gathering data from a different source of information. Here you're gathering data from price. Here you're gathering data from volume and turning it into a reflection. And then the the, uh, the moving averages that are applied to the TDI, the red line and the yellow line that we use, yeah. the L50 and the trend line, they're pulling their information from the RSI, which is pulling from the volume. Yeah. So now you have two different sources of information working mm. towards the same type of analysis. So that's why when we yeah. line the price action, which is king, and the EMAs, when we line that yeah. up with the TDI, that's why exactly mm-hmm. we're able and to put so many put probabilities in our favor. Like Lindsay, when yep. was the last time you lost a trade? It's August 5th today. And I'm pretty sure you said the last. Uh, week. I'm not saying, I'm not saying. <laughs> I, I know. Fact, I, it's been it's a while. In, yeah. I broke even back in the 22nd in June. of May. No, well, wow. May. Sorry. So May. May. That's crazy. But yeah, that's what I'm that's saying. Insane. So when you put probabilities in your favor, I think the reason yeah. she and the other people that are finding success with what we're doing is because of those indicators. So it's interesting to hear so many yeah. closed minded people being like, nope, indicators don't work. It's like, why would you not just yeah. try? Like, just try. Exactly. Uh, try. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I yeah. came into ASFX like fully open-minded that like, even when just, just gathering all the information from the course as well, like it just, it just makes sense. Like, and it's not like I thought, oh, okay, it's going to be complicated. Like, it's going to be like, I got to add, you know, a whole new dimension into my trading, but I was like, sure. Oh, okay. Is that it? Like it right. wasn't, mm-hmm. yeah, it was so easy to gather. Did you have a hard time accepting that? Like when you were like, Oh, this is an entry. This is where I need to actually take the trade. Yeah, this I is, did. This is I everything. Did. It's weird. Right? And now doing the back testing, doing the markups, it's like, this is valid. Like this is working. And like, like you said, adding mm-hmm. the probabilities in your, your favor and lining the two indicators up with the other checklist, like it's just, it works. And I think I'm still struggling with that, that confidence a bit too, because it's like, I'm not used to, I'm not used to it to be like, I wouldn't say easy, but in a sense, 
simple. I know it's a tough way to describe it, right? Because yeah, the, yeah, the word is. easy is never the right word, but simple no, is exactly. a good word. Because simple doesn't yeah. mean it was easy to get there, but simple means no. that once you have the knowledge, it's there. So when I exactly. think it's, it's also because you have a good brain for pattern recognition, but something you mentioned in there was the markups. You've done a lot of markups recently, yes. which for yeah. people that don't know, markups are basically where we go over the day looking for trade ideas, winners and losers. And we try to identify yeah. ones that fit our strategy. So Jerome's been doing them more recently now. Hey, Kat. Um, <laughs> and Lindsay, who's been having so much success is also still doing markups. And the reason why I want to touch on this is because I've seen a lot of people get to Lindsay's point, which is where I think you're going to end up very soon, if not faster than most Jerome. And then exactly. what ends up happening is they stop doing markups. And that's why I'm bringing this up. Cause I don't want Lindsay to stop and I don't want you to stop. Mm. And I want the people listening to not stop yeah. when they get to that point. So can you yeah. talk about how yeah. the markups have helped you? More recently. Tremendously, like more recently, it, it's not so much. It is a massive confidence boost in the system, um, but also just going through day by day, look, doing your markups, and just the overall sense you get from the market and generating all these ideas as well. Like I've actually come across a a weird psychological issue now that I'm not actually pulling the trigger on so many trades because. The, the entries present so often. So I'm always waiting for that higher probability setup. And obviously doing the markups, you can determine how the probabilities and going through the checklist affect each trade. Right. So, so it gives you like experience of, in a sense. Exactly. Massive amount. Like, yeah, the experience, but also keeping me in those higher probability trades and being able to enter them with a bit more risk with high confidence as well. Right. Because yeah, the entry signals present here and there pretty much every day, but doing the markups, analyzing the markups and reviewing them, and then trying to put that in a live market scenario, you kind of have that edge. Like yeah, you're constantly it, it working you on that edge. Selective. Yeah. It exactly. Yeah. Picky, so to speak. Right. Yeah, exactly. Then, yeah. Lindsay, can you share with us like how, even though you're making money and you're winning all these trades and you, you clearly don't need the markups as much as some people. What's motivating you to keep doing them and still posting them every day and still sharing them all the time? Even today, when you're in your trade because on Euro NCD, I'm like, yo, even, send me a yeah. picture. I know you have it. And you had it right away. You had that picture right away. <laughs> because like the trade that I took today, okay, yeah. I classify that as within our system, not a high probability trade. So when I take these kinds of trades with that swap and liquid 50, which we say is not a high probability trade, that builds my confidence on my own edge, as I've spoke to you about before, Austin, and like Eurocada trade you took in the film, that yep. you've got to find your edge in the market. So when you're doing your markups like Jerome's saying, that builds confidence for me when I take these kinds of setups with the swap and liquid 50, that Makes sense. these are still trades that I want to be involved in because that's my edge in the system and right. that's where I'm having the success. Right. So uh, if I stop doing the markups, I know my confidence is going to shift. And you also wouldn't even have gotten to that point if you didn't do the if markups. If I had from the done beginning. markups. That no. the markups themselves give you that unique piece. Yeah. Like when I describe it to people, I think, and that was so well said by the way, but when I describe it to people, I say to them like, you know, some of the guys come in and they'll watch both courses they'll do the A1, the D1, and the D2. And then they'll, like Alex, Alex was really good at D2s, better than yeah. most people. It just spoke to the way that he saw the market moving. Mm -hmm. So course. he would look for different things, but still with the same fundamental knowledge that we all shared. And I think that that then comes back to the community where Jerome can watch Alex trade and then say, okay, look at the way he's doing that. Now let me go in and find my uniqueness. So I see yeah. Lindsay doing markups and Alex doing markups and Austin doing markups. So let me just do the markups and I'll probably find that piece for myself. Right. Yep. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. And that's like, just coming back, like you develop like your edge on top of the edge, really. You kind of yeah. use mm -hmm. your own that's a good way to say style. It. And I think it just having that extra confirmation of your own style as well, just adds so much confirmation to an already great system. Right. So yeah, the markups, markups have helped tremendously with me. Um, I just doing them daily. Like even if I can only do like two or five markups, I just, I, I do them because right. it's just, just a like habit. Going to the building gym. a habit. Exactly. Right. Yep. And it also yeah. like you build that, like that mind muscle memory as well. And like you pick up on your RAS and you can just, you look at a chart and you can quickly just analyze it 
and you can just see the probabilities like well you know we're smart people i think i i mean in general we're not rocket scientists but i think we're smart and we know that Mm -hmm. our eyes and our brain can be trained to recognize patterns especially with repetition that's the way to do it yeah and i was thinking about this the other day it's interesting because i used to play piano like my dad got me piano lessons when i was really young and i remember reading the music and I can still look at music and be, mm. and I could still sit down. I haven't taken lessons in 10 years, more than that now, but I can still read the music because I remember the patterns and I remember yep. where those little circles on the, on the mm-hmm. line, on the staff chart and where yep. my finger should go on a piano, on a keyboard. So it's like, even there, you can see the pattern recognition and that's held in my brain for years. So if you put exactly. in enough experience, like I did with the lessons for 10 years or whatever I did, that can stick with you for life. So it's like almost, I think Lindsay's getting to the point, a lot of the guys that have been with us for a while get to the point where you look back and these patterns are still there years ago. You know what I mean? When you have a, you'll a, think about it five years from now, you'll have a folder of markups from today. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And you'll yep. be able to compare those. And I can do that. I have markups from 2015, 2016, and the patterns are the same. It's crazy. Yep. Um, yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask you, Jerome, I had another question. So, from the other group, what's the biggest difference in community that you've seen with ASFX to what you had before? To be honest, I think it's the the engagement. Um, From who? Everyone, like the coaches, um, and even even yourself, Austin. Like you're willing to put yourself and go beyond. Like you're not, you just you're just willing to help and you know answer the questions, and you're very very open-minded about other people's opinion as well. So, but you tell it how it is. And that's, that's what I love. Like you got to, like, you don't really kind of sway the answer. You kind of just tell them like, if someone posts a markup and it's not like hundred mm-hmm. percent, you'll let them know. And right. I believe that's actually helped tremendously as well. So in terms of the previous educator, I think it's just the whole platform you have going with the discord now and being able to interact with everyone like, so closely and just kind of it's like a conscious mind really everyone's feeding and it's great too because Dude, you're the second person that said that i think <laughs> i talked to really? james yesterday and he said the same thing yep yeah. it's like a, yeah it's like a and, one mind yeah and because everyone's seeing the same thing everyone understands that language so when someone when someone sends a markup or has an idea you can just instantly like relate to it and then you can kind of correspond with your own kind of response and you can kind of just gather all this information like instantly. Do you think and- that it's because the other guys aren't making money and because we're making, like if I wasn't making money trading, I don't think I'd be able to help as many people as I'm helping. I think Lindsay's in the same position. We wouldn't have the free time that we have to do calls with people all day. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, do yeah. you think maybe they're just not as helpful? Dude, I know some guys, the way that they do their model, you can pay them for chunks of their videos. You have to pay them 300 for this chunk, 300 Whoa, for this yeah. chunk. Yeah monthly memberships and we don't do anything yeah. like that no. i wonder exactly. i wonder if it's that just, was a big selling point for me as well just a one-off membership and the think about it. if you want to help been, people how do you help them does is helping somebody charging them a monthly membership <laughs> no no <laughs> <laughs> no one off the one-off payment has been like i don't know like it was just to compared to my old educator and their platform how it was set up like yeah. it asfx i i don't know it kind of leaves me speechless in a way because what i paid for that yeah what i paid for asfx right yeah it's just and the help and how i've basically developed as a trader in the past two months compared to the last you know over a year has just been tremendous so but we have to that st- alone, and that that is awesome to hear and i'm very happy to hear that but we still have to give credit to the year of work that you put in to yeah. studying and learning the language yeah. and getting some yeah. experience. And there's still value exactly. in that no matter what. And it's still hours course. on the charts, you know? Yeah. yeah. And yeah, and exactly that. Like, I reckon, you know, I didn't get scammed. It, I didn't get to leave a, you know, sour For taste sure. in my mouth. Like, For sure. It just, it just kind experience. of, it did, yeah, exactly. And I, I believe it just, it did set me up. For, uh, yeah, it just gives you that point. Story. That's the same thing mm. I feel like for you, exactly Lindsay, from your old Yeah, I, I, I said that I will never forget where I came from right. because I learned my, my foundation there right. and yeah. that then led me to where I'm at today as a trader because I could bring that knowledge with me to ASFX and then share that and help other guys out because if I didn't have that knowledge, 
I could have shared yeah. it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And, and I think it also would me. have taken you. It would have taken you both longer to find success with ASFX Absolutely. if you hadn't Absolutely. had that yeah. experience. You know what I mean? Yeah. You yeah. still needed some type of hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Exactly. I, I would have if coming into ASFX without the foundation I built with my previous educator would have been a, a big uphill battle. I think for me because I would have. Ex- I wouldn't have had those expectations. I wouldn't sure. have, I would have been like trading every signal. I right. wouldn't have had that market experience behind me to right. kind of guide me through it. Are mm-hmm. you yeah. finding any help in any like certain trading books, any like podcasts, any certain YouTube video, of course, other than our stuff? Yep. Yeah. So obviously um, one good trade from Mike Bellafury. Um, I've read that. I'm Dude, currently reading it. Everybody's saying that. Book Mike needs yeah. to sponsor me, bro. Mike, I, I, know I know you're watching my videos. <laughs> Give me a kickback on the books, bro. It's just, it's relatable. I, I have yeah. a, I've got all the trading books that relate to trading psychology, but I believe I'm not at the point where I can understand it. I mean, I haven't really been, I've never blown an account. I've never been hit with a massive loss. Did you so. say you haven't bought an account? Yeah, he did. No, I haven't. Never. Excellent. It's, be- Excellent. it's becoming so more it's and more not popular. Just females. No, yeah. there's a couple of people and now. It's more yeah. and more. And I, I thank yeah. my previous educator for that. Like they stopped, yeah. they stopped that from happening. Like it's so easy to just put money on a trade and you think it's going to go your way and you just risk yeah. it. I've blown enough accounts for everybody. That's what we'll leave it as. <laughs> For real. When I got started, like I, I need to go back and see if I can find my trader's way uh-huh. statements where you can literally see in 2015, oh, it's like hundred dollars gone. Three days later, another hundred dollars yeah. yeah. gone. Another yeah. dude, some days I funded it with $75. Like what yeah. was wow. I thinking putting $75 yeah. into an account and trying to trade it? It's, it is wow. literally I laughable. I know. It's just, it's crazy. Like even with your advice and some of your YouTube content that I went through with funding like an account with a larger size and yeah. how it makes you more selective and yeah. you get more out of it really yeah. risking the same amount. Like it's just or less or le- exactly. You or can less. risk a lower percentage of your account when you have more money and you'll make more money than you would with a small. Exactly. Account. Imagine like a yeah. million dollar account risking half a percent is still going to make more money than a thousand dollar account risking 1%. 100%. You know what I mean? Exactly. So you can, yeah. It's always about percentages. And it was in, it's interesting yeah. because I think a lot of people don't focus in that. And then coming from our perspective where Lindsay and I and even yourself are now helping some people and, and trying to educate people on the right way to trade, you have to yeah. be the bearer of bad news and say, yo, you're going to need some money to trade. Like no yeah. one yeah. in my position that sells courses and educates people would, you would think, would go around saying you need you know, at least 50 grand, a hundred grand to really start making some serious money. But that's what I've been saying, because I think you can't go around lying to people. You have these guys out there that are like, dude, there's some guys on Instagram that teach people. And I heard that they literally say, yo, if your girlfriend doesn't uh, front you the money to fund your account for a hundred dollars or five hundred dollars, then she's really not down to ride with you. I was like, are you fucking crazy, bro? Like, are you literally (laughs) hearing yourself? Like it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. But it's tough because you have to, like I said, be the bearer of bad news and be like, yo, for a lot of people, you're going to need to keep working and you're going to need to learn how to trade. You're going to need to study and trade and get experience while you're working and making money. And you're going to need to save that money to then grow that trading account. Cause not everybody has other businesses. Like I did, like, I know you had some investment properties, correct? Where you have other money coming in. So not everybody is in that position. So whatever yeah. people, whatever position they're in, the honest truth is still, you need serious bread to make serious bread. You can't take a thousand dollar account and expect to make 50 grand in a year. No, it's not happening. No way. <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So like, it's just, even just mindset with ASFX, like, especially with kind of the, like, like you were saying, like the harsh reality of kind of yeah. just having a larger account, but also with the trading psychology part of it, like, I didn't expect that. Like, I just thought, like, here's a system. You didn't I mean when you say you didn't expect it, you didn't expect it to be so important? No, like, I, I just didn't expect that ASFX would offer so Got it. it so Got much. It. Like, it was just kind of, and I'm really hyping up. I'm really hyping you up here, eh? No, it's <laughs> like, okay. It's just, I appreciate it. Because, I mean, if that's how you feel, it's the truth. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, it's just, yeah. But even just psychology wise, like, everyone's, even like with the community and everything, like everyone's feeling the same thing. Yeah. And everyone's starting to understand your psychology too, Austin, where I've seen people in the group chat, like saying, Oh, I feel like entering this chat, this trade, cause I don't want to miss out. And then everyone will come in and, and tell kind them, of be like, 
exactly right. yeah. and it's like yeah which is like perfect because everyone's just kind of well that's because they're mimicking on. me yeah and, and like exactly mimicking Lindsay and mimicking the other people that are successful yes, I think, yeah like again i've never claimed to be the fucking guru i've never claimed to be no. the, Do- the dalai lama right it's just yeah. we have a system that works so mimic it don't overcomplicate it like uh-huh. yesterday i'm talking to a yeah. guy um we won't mention his name just one of the guys in the group and he's like i'm gonna go back testing the one hour and the mm-hmm. five minute and i'm like I'm not trying to tell you what to do, bro, but like for what? Like the 15 minute yeah. and the mm-hmm. one minute mm-hmm. is where we've tested mm-hmm. and it works. Yep. So what are you, what are you yeah. doing? And he's like, you know, <laughs> I didn't think about that, but I have to be, you, again, bear of bad news. You got to be the guy news, that comes uh-huh. in and goes, yeah, yeah. like, yo, bro, you, you sure you want to go do, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So it mm-hmm. like it goes back to what you said, Lindsay, it's simple. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. And I, it's, I'm the same coaching call yesterday. I'll not say the guy, but you'll know who it is when he watches this. And he said the same, Lindsay, I'm pulling the trigger on every idea I see. And at the end of my trading session, I asked myself the same question. Why am I not just following Lindsay and Austin, what they do? Because they're the folk in the group having the success. Right? So I don't even need to open my mouth and tell you that. You've just said it to yourself. So why enter 10 trades in a day and you're losing them? It takes (laughs) like awareness. I think that's the biggest thing. And that's why mm-hmm. people have even been finding a lot of value talking to Riley, yep. just bringing awareness to some of the yep. things. Yep. Th- they're like little speed bumps that we have to go over as traders. But once you bring awareness to it once, I mean, a speed bump is a good example. I have a bunch of speed bumps in my parking lot here. Once you know <laughs> that they're there, I know exactly how fast I can hit yep. them to keep going yep. over them. You know what I mean? So I'm aware of it, but mm-hmm. I'm still going to keep going. I'm not going to yep. freak out and stop. 100%. So th- yep. Think of some of these things as little speed bumps, you know, and if you think about it and you can actually bring your attention to it, then you can course correct and work around it. You yep. know, yep. what do you think has been the biggest change in your trading, Jerome? That's probably my, my last big question for you. Mm. What do you think has been the biggest change since coming to ASFX? The biggest change I reckon since coming to ASFX would be, would honestly be my mindset and yeah. just consistency to how I approach the overall market. Um, like, like you were just saying with trade ideas and stuff, like I would, I would have been one of those people who would have taken every trade yeah. that presented, but mm-hmm. now I'm just generating ideas and stuff, but overall mindset, like, and just it, like keeping it simple. Um, there's no need to really kind of overcomplicate it. You know what I mean? So I've been basically just, just the simplicity and kind of having that mindset to just, yeah, kind of do less, do it better and do it better. Do it better. Mm-hmm. Don't reinvent. Just, yeah. I got it's just, it's hard it. to put it in words because <laughs> I'm trying to make it sound more complicated than it really is, but it's not, mm-hmm. it literally is that. So yeah. 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 Good. That's awesome. I appreciate that. And I'm glad that you're with us and I'm glad that you're here. Cause I, like I said, to you, when we first spoke a couple of weeks ago um, on one of our first calls, I was mentioning to you yeah. the idea of you eventually working in and becoming a coach and starting to help people. Yeah. And I think that in the next couple of months, it'll be cool to be able to look back on yeah. this video and maybe this will be the start of, yeah. of some, some good business that we can do together. Yeah. And I think bring good value to people. That's always what it comes back to. Lindsay, we were talking about that yesterday, just bringing value. As long as it brings yep. value, we're going to throw it out in any way that we can. So what I think we should do yeah, as we're coming to the end here is I'm going to link your Instagram and Lindsay's Instagram down below in the description of this video or this podcast, wherever you're listening or watching this so they can connect with you guys. And then for anybody watching or listening, if you have any questions about ASFX or just about Forex trading in general, I know Jerome and Lindsay are both always open to talk and answer questions and just yeah. kind of guide those of you that are trying to get into this the right way. Cause we know there's so much crap out there and we just want to keep you away from that. You'll find your own path if we can keep you away from that stuff. So that's yeah, what absolutely. we're here to do. So Lindsay, yeah. thank you. Good luck in your Euro and ZD you. trade today. We'll, we'll catch I'm up out. in a little bit. You're out. <laughs> nice. I'm awesome. Out. An- yeah. Another win. Yes. Yes. Awesome. And Jerome, Amazing. I appreciate you, brother. <laughs> Go enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks for hopping on. No I worries. Thank you so much. A little difficult. Yeah, absolutely. Nah, all good. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you all soon. Right. Take you. care, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.